By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at the second match that I played in the Dark Tournament. We are still in the group stages. And this time I'm playing against Casper, who is bringing a blue and white deck to the table that is called Dance of Many Preachers. And I am playing still with my The Ghost Family deck, my blue and red The Dark Brew. Now, before we go to the deck decks, I would just like to remind you that you can always check the description below. There you will find multiple timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the games if you want to skip the deck tech section or maybe you want to go to a specific deck tech section then you can find the timestamps in the description as well there you can also find more information about the rules by the way so if you'd like to know more about this specific tournament check the description it's all there and if it's not there ask a question in the comments. Okay, so let's first start with uh, the deck text. Let's take a look at the deck of my opponent first, the Dance of Many Preachers by Casper. And here we see the first deck, Dance of Many Preachers. And um, what I think what Casper wants to do here is obviously he wants to play out his preacher, right? And then once he's played out the preacher, he wants to copy it with Dance of Many. So let's first, Kind of zoom into Preacher. I think it's one of the stronger cards in the meta, in the dark meta, but it's only a 1 1. So there are quite a lot of cards that can get rid of this. Think about Tracker, think about Brothers of Fire, you know. So it is a very vulnerable strategy, but when you can let it stick, when it can stay on the board, it's actually quite good. So let's first just take a look at what it does, because there's quite a lot of text on this card. It's two white and one to cast for a 1-1 one, one creature from the dark white summon preacher. You can tap it, and uh, for as long as preacher remains tapped, gain control of target creature of an opponent's choice that they control. So you tap the preacher, then your opponent needs to pick one of his or her creatures and give that to you. So that means if there is just one creature, you can steal it, right? But if there are multiple creatures, your opponent can basically choose the weakest one and give that to you. Now there's an extra little line on there that says, you may choose not to untap preacher during your untapped step. So as long as preacher remains tapped, you have control of the creature. You can choose to untap the preacher, of course, during your untapped step, and then the creature that you took goes back to your opponent again. So there are little shenanigans that you can, you can in certain situations do with that. Now, I think what Cusper wants to do here is he wants to use um, his City of Shadows because there's, there's a nice combination here. City of Shadows is a land from the dark um, that you can tap and then it reads exile a creature you control and put a storage counter on the City of Shadows. And there's also another ability to the City of Shadows that says tap at an X amount of colorless mana to your mana pool equal to the amount of storage counters on City of Shadows. So if you, for example, sacked two creatures to the City of Shadows, you can then, it has two counters and you can tap it for two mana. And that's actually, um, that actually can be quite relevant. Uh, I've had matches where uh, all of a sudden their City of Shadows would have three or four counters on them. And this would be a very powerful land, as you can imagine, tapping it for four, you know, out of one land. Um, in this particular combo, um, what Casper wants to do is here use his preacher to steal my creature, right? I'm his opponent, and then sack that creature to the City of Shadows, basically having this removal engine going, and then he's able to just steal everything. So even if I have a weaker creature on the board and he's going to steal that with the preacher, I'm like, well, I'm giving you a weak creature. I've got a better creature here on the board. But what Casper is going to do, he's going to sack any creature that I give him to the City of Shadows anyway, and then next turn untap his preacher again and do that same trick. So um, I think that is his ideal game plan if he has those two pieces on the table. And then he also plays with Dance of Many. So I think what he wants to do is maybe, because he plays with multiple City of Shadows, is get multiple preachers out and just keep copying everything and destroying everything. Now, there are a few things in his strategy that I think make it vulnerable. You know, I already said it's a 1-1 creature. There are certain cards in this meta that are very strong. And I think that I'm playing with one of those cards in the form of Brothers of Fire. Brothers of Fire, you can you can bring him in the game for two red and one. And for two red and one, you can deal one damage 
to any target and you also get one damage back. Um, the important thing here is that Brothers of Fire doesn't have a tap symbol. So that means that I can bring it in the game and if I have enough mana, I can use it straight away to kill a preacher of Patrick. So I think, uh, sorry, of Cusper. So I think that is going to be um, a serious risk for Cusper here. Now there's one other card that really stands out. Um, actually multiple cards here. I really like that he's added the Apprentice Wizard and he's added a Leviathan to his deck. So I think that's super flavorful and I really, um, I like that. I love it when players go like, listen up, Leviathan is this big 11-11. I just want to play with Leviathan. The truth is that in this particular deck, um, Leviathan doesn't make a lot of sense. On the other hand, it is really cool to play with a Leviathan. And I guess you could also see it as a finisher. You have a lot of control in the game and then you want to finish the game. You want to end it, you play your Leviathan. So in that regard, it kind of makes sense. And in this deck, it's actually possible for uh, for Cusper to have multiple Leviathans because of the Dance of Many. He's, he's playing with the full playset of Dance of Many. So there could be a scenario here where, uh, you know, Cusper could get multiple Leviathans on the table and that would just be really cool. So I, I would love to lose against that kind of board state, but I think when we're looking at this deck more realistically, his plan is really the Preacher plan. That is really his A plan. Preacher, City of Shadows, copying it with Dance of Many, steal everything I got, sack it to the city, win the game. Will he succeed? You'll just have to watch the match, I guess. I'm now going to my deck, uh, Ghost Family, and I'm just briefly gonna go through what my deck is all about. Let's take a look. And here we see this second deck, and that is, of course, my deck, the Ghost Family. It's blue, it's red. This is the deck that I've picked for this tournament. Now, if you'd like to know all the ins and the outs of this deck, my thought process behind designing this, uh, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now because that will take you back to the first match that I played in this tournament. And there I give kind of an extensive uh, explanation about this deck, about what I want to do. I think in this particular matchup, it's a very favorable matchup for me. I just have to contain um, those priests. Uh, I'm sorry, preachers, not priests, but preachers. Um, I do believe now after this, after playing the first match and now looking at the deck list in match number two, that I should have played more Brothers of Fire main. Brothers of Fire is just such a powerhouse. So if I could change one thing about this deck already, I would change the amount of Brothers of Fire that I'm playing in this brew. Um, okay, this is my deck. Let's just quickly go to the match and, uh, and, and find out, will my opponent be able to preacher his way out of this and, uh, and win a couple of games? Let's go to the match. Game number one is about to start. I'm gonna roll the dice. I usually ask my opponent to choose odds or even. Then I'm gonna roll the dice. It is even in this case. And I believe it was Cusper who chose even. So that means he gets to be on the place. So we're gonna draw our opening seven. Are we going to keep these cards? That is the question here. It looks like we are. So we're off to the games, I feel, off to the races. There is a basic Plains Pass turn here from Cusper. Basic Island for me and also a pass. So not a lot of action in that first turn, not a lot of one drops in the dark. And playing a basic Mountain passing on. No Felwer yet. Oh, okay, there's the Felwer Stone. I wanted to say, because usually turn two, you see some Felwer Stones dropping. It's uh, one of the better two drops. Of course, Cusper also has um, Pikeman, which is pretty good as a two drop. And here is his favorite three drop. The Preacher hits the board. And what can I do here? Tapping to playing my own Felwer Stone. Looks like I'm a little bit stuck on red mana. No land drop for me here. That is not great. Another Preacher for Cusper. This is exactly what he wants to do. So that means that as soon as I play out a any creature, he can just steal it. So I first need to deal with the Preachers before I can do anything else. Playing a Barrel's Cage here. Barrel's Cage can be useful, but not on this board. A Flood would have been uh, would have been better for me here. And there is Want of If. Now Want of If is a cool little artifact from the dark. It's uh, you can pay three and tap it and then target player reveals a card at random from their hand. If it's a land card, the player discards it unless they pay one life. If it isn't a land card, the player discards it unless they pay life equal to the casting cost. So it's kind of um, a disrupting scepter in the dark. It's, it's pretty sweet. 
there is an electric eel it's a one one and it deals a damage when it comes into board now i'm probably playing this knowing that it's going to get stolen and that's exactly what's happening here so he's gonna tap immediately and steal it and i think in response i'm tapping it with the barrel's cage not quite sure what happened there but it looks like i was tapping it down with keeping it tapped with the barrel's cage and he's going to attack me for one oh this is devastating I, I, I dust to dust losing both of my artifacts here and I'm already behind and I'm even further behind dropping to 17 and I'm probably want to play another um, creature here but I have to discard look at that I'm not finding any mana Ooh, this first game is turning out to be disastrous for me not finding any mana remember if I would have kept the mana rock the flower stone I could have played out maybe a ghost ship or something, but look at this. He found a city of shadows, activating his uh, wand of ith. So if it's a land, I get a damage. If not, I get damage equal to the casting cost of the card, or I need to discard a dance of many. I'm actually discarding my dance of many. I don't want to take any damage. I don't want to take two damage for the dance of many. I could have, of course, played out the Dance of Many and then he would steal it. He couldn't pay the casting cost and it, it would die. Although he cannot steal the Dance of Many, he steals the token, of course. Anyway, ooh, why am I playing a ghost ship? I'm not quite sure. I think I'm not seeing the City of Shadows here. So I'm playing out the ghost ship with the idea that both creatures are tapped and I can start playing out some creatures. But what I'm forgetting here is that my opponent has that City of Shadows and with that City of Shadows, he can simply exile any creature. To make matters worse, there's another creature on the board. Of course, he's attacking me with my own creatures, going down to 13. I think this is kind of a lost cause. I am finding some land, though. What I need is um, that board wipe that deals 6 damage, Inferno. But I still need some more red mana for that. And I'm also going down in life very rapidly here. He's probably going to use his Wand of If again as well. Yeah, there's the Wand of If. Really nice to see that Wand of If activation so many times. Oh, a Fisher! Remember, I cannot play out the Fisher because I do not have two red. One of the difficult things about brewing with, um, with the dark cards is there are a lot of double blues, double reds, double whites, double everything. Playing a Tangle Kelp here over my own creature trying to stop the bleeding a little bit. I'm on 10. Basically what I want to do now is I want to make sure I don't go lower than six so that I can still play my Inferno. My Inferno is my, my ticket back into this game. And of course, playing out the ghost ship was a big mistake. Not just because City of Shadows is on the board, but also just because it's, it's giving uh, Cusper is stick to beat me with you know um, if he only had the electric eel it wouldn't be that much damage and look at that picking up my cards <laughs> and trust me I don't pick up my cards quickly uh, or easily but I mean looking at this board state the mistakes I already made with casting the ghost ship and the city of shadows that deck of Cusper it just worked like clockwork in this first game so well done Cusper really nice to see that wand of if in action as well Luckily, it was just the first game, so I have two more games to play against this deck. Uh, let's go to our sideboards and we'll catch back up with you in game number two after sideboarding. Game number two. And uh, yeah, let's see if I can find the mana and find, of course, a way to contain those creatures. Because uh, once all those creatures hit the board and they don't have summoning sickness anymore, it's really tough. I'm playing with one Inferno, that could be a good board wipe, but preferably I would have some Brothers of Fire on the table and of course enough red mana to activate them. This is a very mana hungry format. I believe I boarded in both my Brothers of Fire for this second game and I'm now waiting on my opponent Casper to also finish up shuffling and getting his first seven. Really nice Kaya Foglio playmat by the way of Sharazad. Very cool old school card. Actually, see some play in um, in EC with uh, white aggro brews. It's a pretty cool way to quickly half your opponent's life total if you have an aggro deck. 
And it also works nice with a card like Swords to Plowsiers, where you can uh, exile the big creatures of your opponent. So exiled cards don't uh, are not shuffled in with the uh, extra game that you play with Sharazad. Uh, anyway, opening here with a Fountain of Youth, second land here for me, passing turn. So both players seems to be finding their lands. And this is interesting. We see blue mana from uh, Kasper. And actually, I think in game uh, one, we hardly saw any blue mana there. There's the Apprentice Wizard. That is pretty cool. Apprentice Wizard, one blue and tap, and it gives you three mana back. So that means that next turn he's got five mana. Ooh, Bow Lightning here going for six. This is a good start for me, kind of the aggressive start. I don't want to give Kasper too much time to get all of his weird preacher combinations going and um there he's on 14 and he now is five six mana so he could play an amnesia if he has one Ooh -hoo! dodged the bullet there i thought it was an amnesia it's actually the book of ras he can pay uh two mana and and pay two life to draw a card actually a pretty good card but not great when you're under pressure and there is a ghost ship for me. So that means I can start dealing more damage next turn. There is a preacher. So this is very risky. With the preacher, he can still steal my ghost ship next turn. And I think he's going to tap two here to draw an extra card. No, dance of many. Maybe he's going to dance of many my ghost ship here. I wonder. I now have enough mana. If I have a Brothers of Fire, I can play it and activate it in the same turn. Then again, I don't know, and that's a little bit annoying. I don't know what that Dance of Many is. I think it's also a Preacher or else he would have blocked it. So he's got two Preachers on the board right now. So he's got to pay two, of course, exactly for the Dance of Many, the upkeep cost. So Dance of Many is an enchantment, right? And when it comes into play, uh, there's a, t a copy is being um, made. That's a copy of one of the creatures in play. And when Dance of Many leaves play, the token leaves play as well. But you have to pay... Uh, two blue to keep it around or else the dance of many enchantment is destroyed and then also the um, um, then also the the token is destroyed so here we see Casper stealing my ghost ship and actually he has played a second preacher so are we going to see a similar situation that we saw in uh, game one I hope not for me but it's starting to look like it if he can find City of Shadows, he has his engine going again. And that is pretty disastrous for me. So he's going to attack me again now with my own ghost ship. I'm going to drop some life, gain some life. Still on 22, that Fountain of Youth is doing pretty good work for me. But the problem, of course, are all these. There's a Tango Kelp. So at least that's going to stop the ghost ship for a little while. And... You know, this is this is just a difficult situation for me. Again, I have to wait until I can first get rid of those preachers, and there are now three preachers on the board. So it is really difficult. Pikeman, oh, Knights of Thorn. This card is a two-two banner with protection from red, and we can see him attacking now. I'm gaining a life and getting some damage, ending up on twenty-one. What can I do here? And actually is deciding to just pass turn. It's not looking great for me. The ghost ship untapping again. At least there's a Tangle Kelp on that. What Tangle Kelp does is it says if a creature attacked the previous turn, it doesn't untap. So that means if he's going to attack with it now again, it doesn't untap. At least that's something. That's going to stop the bleeding a little bit for me. But look at that. Going in here for six damage in total... Gaining a life, that means 5 damage. Going down to 16. Things are looking bad for me. I need to get rid of all those preachers. And I need to do it quickly. I need a Brothers of Fire. And of course, I also need a lot of red mana to activate the Brothers of Fire. And I'm just passing turn here. Look at that. Playing Maze of If. That can help a little bit. I can send back the Knights of Thorn. And the reason I'm putting that counter on the Tangle Kelp, by the way, is to indicate if it untaps or not untaps. So now during the untap step of Cusper, I take away the counter from Tangle Kelp. So that's how we can kind of keep checks if he can untap the ghost ship or not. Paying two. Oh, another dance of many. 
<laughs> Are you serious? Oh man, there are just so many preachers on this board. It is crazy. I really need an inferno. Or maybe if I can get six mountains and then play Brothers of Fire, at least get a double activation from the brothers to kill some preachers. Is that a strategy I could take? But then I am giving my opponent another creature again at the end of it. But I have to do something against all these preachers. At least I'm still on 15 thanks to the Fountain of Youth and the Maze of If. But this is looking really bad for me. Next turn he can untap my ghost ship as well again. He can swing in with that. He can swing in with all those creatures. Just passing turn here. Wow, wow, wow. And this must really feel nice for Cusper to kind of see his deck doing what it's supposed to do two games in a row. And look at that, just getting tons of damage here. Sending back, okay, yeah, sending back the copy of the ghost ship. I guess that's a copy of the ghost ship then that last played uh, Dance of Many. And I'm going to 10 here, so things are going quite rapidly. Found another mountain. I think if I have a Brothers of Fire, I just need to do it now. Remember, Brothers of Fire also deals damage to me, so I don't want to get too low. Playing out my Brothers of Fire, exactly. Now, Brothers of Fire, for two red and one, I can deal one damage to any target. Even, you know, in response, he can steal it, right? But the damage is on the stack. It's going to happen no matter what. So what I can do is first deal two damage with uh, the Brothers of Fire, and then pass priority. Interesting here. I'm actually passing turn. I'm not doing anything. I'm just waiting for him to make up his mind what he wants to do with the Brothers of Fire. I want to make it difficult for my opponent. I want my opponent to make a decision, decision here. Remember, in this situation now, I can also block and I can deal damage. Now he's attacking with his pikemen in a band. Remember, they have banding and first strike, so it's now a 2 2 first striker. It looked like we skipped a little bit to discuss the situation. <laughs> and uh, let's see what's going to happen now. I'm activating my Brothers of Fire twice. I'm dealing damage to the preacher. He is tapping to steal it and to the untapped preacher. So that means I'm getting Brothers of Fire back straight away and I can use it next turn to kill his other preachers? Wow. Wow, that would be that would be actually be a way out of it for me here. I'm gonna go to eight because I'm dealing damage to myself. And now the two damage of the Brothers of Fire is still on the stack. So I think I'm killing the token of the Dance of Many that you see there on the left side and I'm killing his preacher. Let's see what I'm going to do here. So I'm showing him what I'm doing. I'm showing him how I think it works. I'm saying in response to you stealing my Brothers of Fire, I'm activating my Brothers of Fire twice, killing uh, both of your preachers. So the untapped preacher so that you cannot steal it again when it comes back in my position and the one that you tapped to steal my Brothers of Fire. That means that my Brothers of Fire is returned to me because it dies. I'm sending back the ghost ship and I'm taking the two damage. And I actually think it's a. That's the only mistake I'm making here, sending back the ghost ship. I should have sent back the Knights of Thorn. Uh, because the ghost ship is not going to attack next turn because of the Tangle Kelp. He's going to do something here with. Okay, he's going to draw a card with his apprentice wizard. And what else is he going to do here? He's going to play a Wand of Ith. And he's taking a lot, he's taking a lot of damage from his own Book of Rast, by the way. Look at that, he's on six. And I've got lots and lots of mana, but I'm very low on life. I'm on four here. Why did I decide to send back that ghost ship? That was really a mistake, or else the ghost ship would have had a Tangle Kelp counter on it, wouldn't untap next turn. And this is really a, pro a problem here. Playing another ghost ship. Am I going to survive this next turn? I need to kill his preacher. Remember that. He still has a preacher. I have to kill it. I don't think I have another option. Of course, I'm going to wait for him to first tap his preacher. 
That's why I'm putting that three mana there under my Brothers of Fire. He's untapping everything. Remember, he also has a Wand of If that he can use to deal damage. And he's trying to steal something. In response, I am killing the Preacher. Oh, of course, and then I'm getting my own Ghost Ship back. So that's why I didn't send... Uh, that's why I sent it back with the Maze of If. Wow, I'm a better player than I thought. Well done, Timmy. Anyway, look at that. Now I have a lot of defenses here. Could I steal this game from Cusper? Let's see what's going to happen next. He's kind of stuck here. He can he can make a big band, but I can simply send back his Knights of Thorn and I can block with a ghost ship. So attacking here doesn't seem to be a good option for Cusper. That one Dance of Many is a ghost ship. He can attack with the ghost ship, but I can block the ghost ship on my ghost ship. Of course, I'm hoping for him to simply pass turn so I can gain an extra life with Fountain of Youth and Fountain of Youth extra life gain is simply an extra damage with the Brothers of Fire in this particular board state, I can slowly start pinging away the creatures of my opponent here. Is he going to draw another card? What is he going to do here? Oh, <laughs> play a Leviathan. That is actually pretty cool. Unfortunately, I have a Mace of If on the board. I feel kind of bad about that because it would have been so cool if Cusper could still win this. And I think if I wouldn't have the Mace of If, he actually would have gotten this. And just to clarify... Um, in this particular The Dark Constructed Tournament, we have restricted the Maze of If. So everybody is only playing with one Maze of If max. So I'm quite lucky to have found the Maze of If here. If I wouldn't have had the Maze of If, I would probably would have died next turn. Attacking here with my Bull Lightning. And I think he's going to block it on his first Striker Pikeman. That's a bit of a bad play here for me. So Pikeman is a great answer to Bull Lightnings. Playing a Fire Drake. I need to like keep my head in the game here. Uh, that Bull Lightning was really a messy mistake. So I need to just stay focused here. Because I'm on 4. It's really easy to still lose this game. I have stabilized. But I'm not there yet. And it looks like he is actually untapping the Leviathan. He's going to sack 2 blue to untap it. I think that's a good decision. I don't have any ways of tapping it. So he might as well just attack. And then he, he can always attack. And if I send it back with Maze, it gets untapped anyway. If I don't send it back, I'm probably dead. So I think this is a pretty good move by, by Cusper. He's got, he's got enough lands. He also has the Apprentice Wizard. He does seem to be in the tank a little bit about this decision. He's probably trying to figure out a way of, you know, how can I still win this? He's top decking, just like me, I believe. We're both empty-handed, finding a planes. He's on six. He doesn't want to use the book anymore. He doesn't want to go down in life. Ooh, he is going down in life. He is a risk taker. Going down to four... Having one card in hand. The problem, of course, for Cusper is the Brothers of Fire that I have on my side. If he plays another Preacher, I can simply kill it with the Brothers of Fire activation. Even though I don't have double right now, um, I have a whole turn to respond. And he's going to pass turn here. And he slowly sees my life ticking up again with that Fountain of Youth. And I think I just have to be really patient here. Not do anything hasty. Tapping 5 for a Fisher. Probably going to take care of his flyer. Exactly, that's what I'm going to do. Taking care of the copied flyer. And I'm attacking with my flying army. That Oh, that's enough damage, actually. That's enough damage? That's game? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Cusper, thank you. Thank you for this second game. Oh, man, this was... This was a nail biter. This was a nail biter. Also, I didn't understand why I, I sent back the ghost ship, my own ghost ship with the Mace of If until I saw me actually doing it. And I'm like, oh, I was a couple of steps ahead in my mind. So uh, that was a pretty good play. So, wow, what a close game. This is 1-1. So um, that means a game number three, and that will be the decider. So let's go to game three. Game number three, and here we go. It's Gusper on the place. That's a slight advantage. And uh, wow, that game too. What a thriller. 
and showing him the cards. I guess I'm gonna keep or not. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep here. Okay, there's an island by Casper. Let's see what my start's going to be like. Just a mountain and a pass turn. So no fountain of youth for me. No two drop for Casper passing turn as well. No Felwer stone. And there's a Felwer stone for me. So this is giving me a slight advantage. I am a little bit worried that I don't see an island, but at least my opponent is playing with island. So I can now have at least one with the Felwer stone. Finding my second one. There is Brothers of Fire. That means next turn I can roast that poor apprentice wizard. Unless, of course, Casper can do something about it. It's really hard to like remove things. How do you say that? To remove things adequately? I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. You know, um, what I mean is there's no swords to plow here. There's no lightning bolts. You've got Fisher, but of course, it's Fisher is a red card, not a white or a blue card. Um, so this is Brothers of Fire is just so strong in this scenario. Attacking here. So in this single turn, he's losing a creature and losing two damage. And remember, if he plays a preacher, I can simply roast it straight away with my Brothers of Fire. So he first needs to find a way to get rid of the Brothers. Tapping six. Amnesia. Oh, Amnesia. Oh, man. This is such a killer for my opponent. He gets to keep the lands. He has to discard everything else. And he was already behind... Oh, man. There I see that card, by the way, with the Drew Tucker art. I believe it's called Holy Light. And all the non-white creatures get minus one, minus one. That was actually a great weapon against my Brothers of Fire. If you could find a double Holy Light and have enough mana to cast both of them in the same turn, he could wipe all my Brothers of Fire, in this case, my single Brothers of Fire. And that would really help him move forward in this matchup. But now it looks like the game is, I don't want to say finished, but... Very close to being finished after that Amnesia and a Brothers of Fire on the board playing Sisters of the Flame. So the family is getting complete. All we need now is a ghost ship to see the full ghost family. And then they are going on a boat outing. But uh, things are looking really bad for Casper. And what's so interesting about these matches is that, you know, game one was a game on its own. Game two was a game on its own. And game three, again, is completely different as well. There is a bull lightning. Oh, and a dance of many. This is it. This is it. Wow, what a quick game. Ho, ho, ho. And this is one of the things that I want to do, of course, with my deck. Dance of Manny, Bull Lightning, and Swing for 12. Also really nice to see that Sisters of the Flame being used for the third rat mana. This is exactly why I made the choices that I made in my brew. Does this happen often? I don't know. I hope it's going to happen. Oh, I hope it's going to happen more often. But, um... Anyway, uh, wow, 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 wow. What a quick game number three. And this is also what can happen. And this is how my deck wants to work, how my deck can work. It doesn't happen too often, I think. But, you know, who knows? I still have three more matches in group stages. This is my second victory. Now, remember, in this tournament, um, you can it, it goes by points. So you win a point by winning a game. So now I've won two points and my opponent Casper has won one game, uh, one point because he has won one game. That's what I'm trying to say. Not sure if you're interested in that, by the way. Um, but if you like these The Dark matches, come back next week, Tuesday. I have another The Dark match for you and you can see my deck in action in the third match that I played in this tournament. And I also have the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and yes, also the finals. So if you're interested in this, Keep coming back right here because it's here on Saving Talk. So I'd like to thank Casper for sharing his deck with all of us. And I would like to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that very simply by liking this video, leaving a comment, sharing this content on your socials, and also by subscribing. If you're not a sub yet, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. Another way is you can become a patron of the channel. And when you become a patron, you can join in tournaments like this. You can join our Discord, and there's just many more stuff that you can join and that's going on on Timmy Talk. So if you want to know more about that, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can already support the show starting with a single dollar. Talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wonderful patrons and channel members. 
What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als vinger te somber gezien.